Premier League game week three review. Let's go. Starting off with Arsenal against Brighton. I predicted 2 0 Arsenal. Ended up being a 1 0 draw. But wow, this game was controversial. Arsenal took the lead after Saka, 5 foot 7 Saka, managed to out jump and out muscle 6 foot 4 Lewis Dunk. Kai Havertz with a brilliant finish. Arsenal were definitely a better team in the first half. Could have been more than 1 0. Especially considering that Lewis Dunk had a clear handball that wasn't given. Like he was nowhere near the ball, hit his arm. The ball was on target, so it could have gone in, we don't know, and I don't know how that was not given as a penalty. And then, very early in the second half, Declan Rice got sent off for a second yellow for kicking the ball away and delaying the restart. And I do think it was very harsh because Veltman, first of all, kicked the ball at Rice, so you could say the free kick was already taken. Yes, Rice did technically kick it away, but he, again, if it's in play, but again, he's not really delaying the restart because the ball was rolling, so Veltman wouldn't have been able to take it quickly anyway. Veltman then booted Rice, and Rice got a second yellow. Nothing happened to Veltman. And the, the issue with Rice getting a second yellow for that is because Jack Pedro booted the ball 50 yards in the first half after the ball clearly went out for a throw in, did not get a yellow card. Estepinian, towards the end of the game, picked the ball up to delay Arsenal taking a quick free kick, ran towards his own half, didn't get a yellow card. Now, I know the refs get enough stick as it is a deserved stick for the vast majority of the time as well. But it is a bit sus that the referee, Chris Kavanagh, is from Manchester, is it not? I think Kavanagh should be subject to a thorough investigation, but we know that's not going to happen. Defensively, Lewis Dunk is pretty bad, but his pass into Minte for the equaliser that Jao Pedro put in was actually exceptional. Gabriel could have done a lot better, in my opinion. Arsenal did have chances on the counter. Havertz had a one-on-one -on -one that he missed. Saka had a chance that he maybe should have done better with. Brighton had an open goal with Ayari that they missed, but overall, to be fair, the fact that it was 10 v 11, there wasn't a lot in it, you know. I was expecting Brighton to be a lot better after Arsenal had Declan sent off, but they didn't really take advantage. Brentford against Southampton, I predicted a two-goal Brentford win. And Buemo scored two goals. He has been fantastic. I don't know what he's still doing at Brentford Football Club. Someone rescue him, please. But once again, Southampton, just the architects of their own downfall, giving the ball away, Bednarek and Jack Stevens were both horrific. Obviously, it's Ramsdale's debut and he could not do anything. You know, he was, he was really hard done by. He was not helped at all by his defenders. Southampton's first goal on their return to the Premier League was actually very nice though from Sugawara right at the end of the game. Didn't mean anything though. But Russell Martin, I, I just don't like you, man. You're so bad. 63% possession for Southampton and they did absolutely nothing with it. It's another game where they've dominated the ball, but they've created niche and it's going to happen every game, you know. They're like a worse version of last year's Burnley. Everton against Bournemouth. What a roller coaster this game was, man. I predicted a draw. But Everton lost 3 2 despite being 2 0 up in the 86th minute. First half, they were fantastic. They completely dominated the game. They had all the chances, but it was 0 0 heading into the break. A goal and an assist from Dominic Calvert Lewin early in the second half put Everton 2 0 up. Again, they were cruising. Tim Eric Burnham was playing really, really well. Illiman and Dai was a breath of fresh air. He was fantastic. He needs to start every game if Everton are going to be successful. But it's Sean Dyke, man. I really rate you. I really do like you. But what were you doing? The subs he made were absolutely criminal. Beto and Decore coming on for Ndai and Calvert-Lewin. Decore and Beto are not the subs you want to bring on when you're trying to keep the ball... You know, like, they're both just not very good at doing that. Eric Burnham, he did play really well, but at the end of the game, he was awful because he was knackered. I really like him as a QPR fan. He was pretty good for us on loan a couple of years ago. But he needed to go off after the 75th minute, man, because he was knackered. But it's brilliant from Bournemouth, you know. The mentality they showed to be 2 0 down away from home and still win the game that late on. Sinistera with a goal, and it says Clive was really good. Tara come on and was very good as well. And Bournemouth unbeaten to start the season continues. For Everton, three losses in a row is not great. Ipswich Town against Fulham. Ipswich picked up their first point of the season. I did think they were going to win the game. And to be fair, they could have. Liam Delap was fantastic. He scored a really nice goal. The chance a couple minutes after that, he should have also buried there, which would have made it 2-0. Probably killed off the game. Fulham then equalised. I thought Ipswich were overall the better team throughout the game, but not by a lot. And um, but it was another very positive home performance from the Tractor Boys. They keep this up, they will get more points. Leicester City against Aston Villa. I did predict a 2 2 draw here. Villa 1 2 1. I mean, when I saw the lineup that Steve Cooper decided to put out, benching Facundo Bonnote and once again not giving a start to Sethi Mavadidi, I was shocked. A midfield of Harry Winks, Oliver Skip, and Wilfred Ndidi has no creativity on it. Everything fell on the shoulders of. Abdul Fatabu, who is a really good young player, but you can't expect him to be the sole creator 
in the team in the Premier League. That midfield is so defensive, like what was he thinking? Both Anana and Duran scored in two consecutive away games. Obviously, both of them were the scorers in the 2-1 away win at West Ham a couple of weeks ago. However, at 1-0, Leicester actually did put the ball in the back of the net, but David Coote was an idiot and decided to blow the whistle because the ball did hit him, even though it was off a, a Leicester pass, so he should have played advantage there. A uh, really dumb decision from him. Obviously, you could say that the Villa players stopped playing because he blew the whistle, but it was just a really immature decision from him. And as soon as Mavadidi and Bonanote came on, they contributed to a goal. Mavadidi created it, Bonanote put it into the back of the net. Them two are going to be key if Leicester do want to survive. I do not want to see Steve Cooper bench in either of them again. Luke Ferris, absolutely horrific in this game. As a, like, He's like Lewis Stank, man. He's good with the ball at his feet, but defensively, he is so bad. Nottingham Forest against Wolverhampton Wanderers. I picked it 2-0 Forest win. Ended up being a one-all draw. Marilla made a goal line block in the first minute of the game. It was a really quick start because Chris Wood then put Forest 1-0 up after a very simple corner. It was There was no routine here at all. It was just a ball into the box. He headed it back across and it went in. But a minute later, Bellegarde decided to score a scream and level the game. Really bad calls from the referee here as well though. Strand Larson clearly elbowed Chris Wood and Nottingham Forest should have had a penalty for that. It wasn't given. VAR didn't overturn it and then the other way Chris Wood clearly handballed the ball in his own area and again it wasn't given I don't know what the ref I don't know what VAR were doing both sides should have had a penalty obviously if for, the Forest one was given first the Wolves one might not happen so Forest technically were kind of robbed but Anderson and Morgan Gibbs White both were really really good I think they could form a really nice dynamic Anderson will make those box-to-box -box sort of runs Gibbs White will find him with passes as well they're going to be really exciting to watch together I think West Ham United against Manchester City, I thought it could be a 2-2 draw. Manchester City won 3-1, courtesy of Erling Haaland, again. In fact, West Ham actually started the game really well. First five minutes, they they showed intent. Haaland missed a pretty easy headed chance before putting the Citizens 1-0 up after a West Ham mistake. From the moment they scored until the West Ham equaliser, Man City was so, so dominant. They could have been 5-0 up. Kevin De Bruyne had a couple good chances. He hit the post as well from one that he should have probably scored. But he was pulling the strings. He was playing really well. And then West Ham equalised. Really unfortunate from Ruben Diaz, but fantastic work from Jared Bowen. Harlan made it 2-1 with a brilliant strike. But in the second half, I thought West Ham were the better team. Could have hit the post. Late on, Somerville hit the post. Oh, he came on too late, in my opinion. He needs to be coming on earlier because he's a really good player. Some of Bowen's passes were really good, but against the run of play Erling Haaland ran through on goal made it 3-1 with Man City and killed the game off Chelsea against Crystal Palace I predicted a draw and it was a draw before this Chelsea had won 13 games on the bounce against Crystal Palace and Madueke did have a couple good chances that he should have buried Henderson made a really good save from one of them but the way three of the front four linked up for the first goal was just brilliant. Madueke with a good run, Palmer with a really nice assist and Jackson had an open goal to tap it into. But Abere Eze, what a strike from that boy, man. He made it 1-1. It's really nice. It's always nice to see a former Rangers man score against Chelsea. Henderson made some really, really crucial saves in this game. But I also thought the Chelsea centre max, both Fafana and Colwell, dealt with Mateta really well. They did not allow him any space. They didn't allow him to get into the game. And it, it, there's not many defenders that have done that since Glasner has come to the Premier League. There was a big improvement from Crystal Palace as well when the Corey came on from Will Hughes in the second half. But Will Hughes should have been sent off. So you could argue Palace were very, very lucky. Newcastle against Tottenham, I did predict a one goal Newcastle win. Tottenham in the first half played like Southampton, dominated the ball, but did absolutely nothing with it. Harvey Barnes, what a player that boy is, man. I actually really, really like him. He's one of my favourite players. And he scored a brilliant goal. He almost scored another beauty as well. It was a really good performance from him. Hopefully, he will be starting a lot more games. The first of Newcastle were the better team. Isaac hit the woodwork. They definitely looked the more threatening team. They went in one a lot, but in the second half, Tottenham came out with a bit more of a point to prove. They created some much better chances. The goal they scored was really poor from a Newcastle perspective. Pope should have done better with it. Tottenham's final third decisions were still not great. Johnson came on though and was really good. He put in some really nice crosses, but Son was really poor. Odebear made some bad decisions. Kulisevsky was pretty bad as well. Joel Linton though, brilliant once again. The way he created that second goal, man, he just shrugged off Madison and played a brilliantly weighted pass. Completely beat the Tottenham high line. Murphy squared to Isaac, who finally got off the mark this season. He, he will score a lot of goals, you know. He just needed that first one. With Tonali now back as well. Charter returning the next game as well. Things will look up for Newcastle now. They have got seven points from their first three games, despite not playing too well. 
And I know for a fact their performance levels will increase because they've got Eddie Howe as the gaffer. Finally, Manchester United against Liverpool. I predicted a two on my United win. Liverpool won 3 0. Casemiro, mate, you are done at this level. Go to the MLS. You're not even good enough for Saudi, mate. You have to go to the MLS if you genuinely want some playing time in a kind of prestigious league. The downfall of this man needs to be studied in such a short span of time. He's, look, he's gone from a genuinely very good player into someone that would not start for Ipswich Town or Southampton. He gets caught on the ball so easily, he cannot move, he's, he's turned into a statue again, man. And in 45 minutes, he made two mistakes that Liverpool scored two goals from. He got hooked at half-time and Collier came on and actually looked quite good. Mainly made the mistake for the other Liverpool goal. All three of the Liverpool goals came from the Manchester United midfielders mistakes. It's just not good enough. Bruno Fernandes, absolutely anonymous yet again in a big game. He, he's so overrated that he's not world-class. He's not even close to world-class. Salah assisted Diaz for the first two goals before scoring himself. I think Anana should have done better with his goal though. And once again, Gravenberch in the midfield for Liverpool was brilliant, man. He's been incredible in a position that he isn't too familiar with. So I thought this game week, let me know what you thought in the comments down below and I'll see you soon for another video.